It feels like when the grass starts to get mowed, it feels like spring again, like the witch is dead, we made it through another winter. But uh, thank you for coming to the lecture on enzymes. My name is Dr. Tim Weeks. I'm the owner of Whole Body Health in Medina, Ohio. I think I see a couple familiar faces. You guys have been to a lecture before, correct? Have you? Good. So you guys are, you have too. Well, this is awesome. Um, I don't believe I recognize you gentlemen. Uh, no, First time? Well, let me tell you, you're in for a treat. So a lot of people, I, I was realizing I need to come up with better names. Like when you see something enzymes, the key to longevity, it sort of has like this maybe mixed meaning. I need, to, I need to call my lectures like, let me tell you how to live forever. Let me, how to feel, let me tell you how to feel like you're 20 years old again. Would that be a better name? Would you think more people would uh, show up if I did that? <laughs> so enzymes are the most important thing when it comes to health. Everything comes down to enzymes. Can anyone give me the definition of what an enzyme is? Yeah. Holy crap, you're good. You're good. So that it's a protein molecule, and what do what do enzymes do in the body? Yeah, yeah. They're necessary for every chemical reaction in the body. So, if enzymes are necessary for every chemical reaction in the body. Does it seem like it's important that we have a sufficient amount of enzymes? The energy that's allowing you to sit here and look, to speak and respond, to write notes about what I'm talking about, it all is dependent on enzymes. Without enzymes, you couldn't breathe, you couldn't walk, you couldn't talk. Without enzymes, you're dead. Many people believe that enzymes are the reason that we age and die. Have any of you ever heard the uh, saying, a man can eat so many grains of rice, when he's eaten his grass, last grain of rice, he will die. Have any of you ever heard that before? Basically, what it's saying is you have so much digestive and enzyme capacity, when you used it up, you're done. And as so often, a lot of these old sayings have scientific validation in today's world. What they're finding is that as we age, we run out of enzymes. And literally, the aging process is running out of enzymes. And so if we can guard against loss of enzymes, essentially, yeah, we can extend the aging process. Does anyone know how long the human body is designed to function? 120 years. Yeah, so Again, that's a biblical thing that they're finding with scientific uh, research that our bodies, our cellular function is pre-programmed at birth to last about 120 years. And here's the cool thing. It's scheduled death. There's literally scheduled human death. It's called apoptosis. And this scheduled death, when it occurs, we're supposed to die rapidly. Um, I talk about this a lot too, but uh, the old song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Um, our life is like a candle. We let it shine. It should be bright. Right up until the candle's out, it flickers and goes out. Death should be quick, and it should be easy. And it happens when we run out of enzymes, and the scheduled cell death occurs. Now, in my opinion, the worst and most sad thing about modern culture is the decline that we're witnessing. The decline in human health. Uh, each generation we're finding, and I'm gonna go into this more as we talk, that we're, we're getting the diseases of old age at a younger and younger age. They're finding osteoporosis in 30 year olds, arteriosclerosis in 20 year olds. We're routinely hearing about people in their 20s and 30s getting heart attacks. Um, and so something is happening. The, the, as some doctors put it, diseases of modern culture are becoming more and more intense. And I theorize, and many other holistic doctors do as well, that it's because of depletion of enzymes. So now, how many of you think enzymes are important? How many of you want to hear about how to preserve your enzymes and make them last? OK, good. I got, I got a good crowd now. Great. All life functions of cells are mediated by enzymes. A way of thinking about our body a really easy, simple way to understand human health is that we are a bag full of cells, which we are. Each cell in our body is like a little nuclear reactor. And what it does is it eats food, calories, right? 
and it uses nutrients and it converts that food to energy. It's that simple. Does anyone know how many cells we have in our body? How many little nuclear reactors we have in our body? It, yeah, it's in the trillions. It's uh, an enormous number. And every single one of these cells required, uh, requires enzymes. In fact, a lot of doctors have shown that if you can guard against enzyme depletion, you're actually not just guarding against death, you're guarding against cancer because it's enzymes that break apart cancer as they're developing. And so, um, how many of you like to see enzymes at work? Can, I, can anyone tell me an enzyme at work that we can see every single day happening? I'll give you some examples. So I have it up here. What makes a banana turn brown? And, and enzymes. Yeah. Well, oxygen, but the, the oxygen around it has an enzyme reaction. Has anyone ever had a dry aged steak? You know, you go to like Morton's and you pay like way too much for the steak, and they're like, this thing's been sitting for 90 days. And you think, why would I want a steak that's been sitting out for 90 days? Because the enzymes in it break up the meat and make it more tender. So when an alligator catches something in the wild, it doesn't just eat it, right? It drowns it and it goes and leaves it somewhere for a couple weeks so the enzymes can break it apart. Uh, after we die, it's the enzymes that decompose our body along with bacteria. And actually, one of the things that I mentioned last night, they're showing that people are even decomposing slower than they used to because there's no enzymes left in our bodies. And so, um, what foods have no enzymes in it? So have any of you ever heard the experiment where they like, put McDonald's out and like three years later it looks the exact same way? How is that possible? Hey, no enzymes, exactly. And so what happens to a Happy Meal that has no enzymes when you eat it? Where does it go? How does it digest? Any guesses? If you need enzymes to digest food and you eat food with no enzymes, where, what happens to this food? Yeah, well, some of it stays undigested, and you're right. They say the average American has about 15 pounds of undigested food in their gut. But what your body has to do is it has to convert. So there's two types of enzymes. There's digestive enzymes that's in food, and there's metabolic enzymes. Metabolic enzymes are what I was talking about earlier that run everything, breathing, moving, um, breakdown of cancer. Your body has to say, OK, there's no digest digestive enzymes. I'm going to convert the metabolic enzymes into digestive enzymes. Uh, and if it, can you imagine, if you're doing this every single meal, why this might be a problem? We're using up our bank account. Yeah, we're using up our bank account. And then um, here's some other foods that deplete enzymes. And then we go, uh, and something breaks. We get arthritis, or we get heartburn. Uh, and we go to the doctor. And do they ever tell us, like, hey, you know, your metabolic enzymes are depleted. You should really consider going on a raw diet or some system for rebuilding your enzyme reserves. You know, it's really easy. It's beyond easy to know um, if uh, you're running out of enzymes. How, and I'll get to this slide in just a second. But does any, any of you have any guesses on an easy way that you can know for sure that you don't have enough enzymes, which we all do every day, almost? Gas. Gas. What does undigested food do? It breaks down inside you. Uh, and that produces bloating, belching, gas. Uh, and so I've said it so many times that among my friends, when somebody uh, rips one, somebody else will usually say, oh, enzyme deficiency. <laughs> Because they know. And then here's the really scary thing. Most people, most scientists, have correlated increased levels of gas with cancer. Uh, and so when your gas starts getting really bad, um, especially as we're older, it's an it's a, it's a indication that your body's getting closer to cancer. And a man named Dr. Kelly described this. He said, if I give you pancreatic enzymes and your gas goes away, you're at risk, at high risk, of developing cancer. And so, you know, it's all of a sudden, when you start thinking of it that way, it's not really a laughing matter so much. Your, your metabolic enzymes, your ability to break down some of these foods, are being depleted because of your metabolic bank account. And so, 
what's the difference between these two things? Yeah, one has enzymes and one doesn't. One allows our natural life expression to go the way it's supposed to and one does not. So the decisions, this is interesting to me, the decisions that we make, especially when pregnant and when children are young, it sends you on one or two of two paths in life. One path is just uh, littered with diagnosis and treatment and drugs and sickness and illness. And the other is a completely pain-free, illness-free life. And it really truly comes down to, especially, um, especially the beginning, man. Um, Wes Knight Price talked about this. A woman has to consume the right foods uh, while pregnant, uh, the, the proper amount of fats and minerals and nutrients. And then when that child comes out of the birth canal, they're coated in the mother's bacteria, which is essential. It, it, it builds the seeds of a healthy immune system for life. And then they have to get breast milk. That breast milk is totally rich in enzymes uh, and bacteria and things that feed your bacteria. And it just sets all of the seeds up for a good, healthy life. Uh, I was just talking to a girl a couple minutes ago, actually, and she was telling me about uh, a health concern that she has. And uh, what's the knee-jerk reaction, basically, by every doctor when you go there and you have almost anything wrong with you or any illness? The first thing that we do? Antibiotics. Antibiotics. Yeah. And, and what, what scientists are finding is that every time we knock down our, our good bacteria and our, our enzyme systems, we get sicker. And here's, what the, here's the really fascinating thing, is that they're finding that the bacteria that we got in our guts, we got from our mothers. And she got them from her mother, and her mother, and her mother. Truly, these systems are our birthright. And so when we inadvertently take an antibiotic, we're literally destroying the immunity that maybe our great, great, great grandmother developed and passed down all those generations. And it's ne never going to go along further. Uh, and so we have to end this war on enzymes and bacteria. The real thing that I find just devastating is they're doing this to fruits and vegetables now. Uh, they're radiating the meats, they're radiating the fruits and vegetables. Why would they do this? Same reason. Keep things cool. Keep, yeah, to shelf life. And so then what they do is they spray them with gas right before they put them out on the shelf so that they ripen, but they kill off all the enzymes. And so even with fruits and vegetables, even with raw meat, we have to be concerned if they're doing this, thing, doing this stuff. And um, what we're finding through epigenetics is that each generation is getting these old person diseases younger and younger and younger. And I'm theorizing because we're running out of enzymes at younger and younger and younger ages. And so these are what enzymes look like. They're actually just uh, protein structures. And when they fit in the right lock, it's the right key in the right lock, they activate a chemical reaction. There's over 5,000 different metabolic enzymes in our system to run everything. The things that destroy it is first heat. Anything above 118 degrees. This is an important thing to think about, especially when you're starting to cook your food, um, to know where the enzyme systems begin to die. Cold and freezing don't kill them, but they make them go asleep. So freezing is a safe way to store food. Enzyme inhibitors in the body. Alcohol, unfortunately. Free radicals and fluoride. Dehydration. Food, preserving, food preservatives, uh, especially canning. And then like I talked about, the ionization, radiation, they're doing a lot of the meats and vegetables. Nerve gas. <clears throat> what are some things that we could all start right now to preserve our enzyme systems? Some of the things I already mentioned. Yeah, eat more raw food. Eat more fruits and vegetables, organic, so you know that they aren't, they're not in GMO. They're not sprayed. Um, when you eat meat, don't cook it as much, right? Uh, and so what we would do with our, our patients is uh, anytime a patient comes to me, we, do, we take them through what we call a 21-day DNA reset. And what that is is for 21 days, we have them eat nothing but real food, food that contains enzymes, meat, vegetables, uh, no additional sugar, no process or packaged food. Uh, in 21 days, they found that literally 
in epigenetics, how your body expresses your DNA will change in a 21-day period. And many of your symptoms will go away. And what I tell people is this is a really important experiment, because then you write down all those symptoms that went away, and those are your new check engine light. Those are the signs that your body does not have the enzyme capacity uh, that it needs. Second step is heal and seal the gut. Replenish the enzyme reserves. If you have low stomach acid, if you have poor liver bile drainage, if you have low small intestine, if you don't have enough good bacteria, it doesn't matter what you're eating. So during the first two months I work with people, this is usually all we focus on. Uh, so if you came to me, we would do digestive enzymes. Uh, and then maybe a couple other things, if you, we thought you had a leaky gut, to seal it. But that's where you gotta start, for a couple of months. Movement, they're uh, showing um, over and over again that sitting is the new smoking, literally. The healthiest cultures, what they call the centurions, the people that are living to 100, they're finding that they're moving all day long. They're not sitting. Uh, without sitting, when you sit, um, you, cannot re you, don't, you don't get movement in your fluids in the body, and you can't remove a lot of the toxic waste from our body. And then we uh, optimize the good fats. Once we have digestive capacity back, you have to have the right balance of omega-6 to omega-3s. You have to uh, have the fat-soluble vitamins. Weston A. Price showed in his studies that without the right type of fats in your diet and the right balance, that you cannot utilize minerals. And this is important. Um, so a lot of people are supplementing with vitamins and minerals. Until you get the fats right, it's, it's, it's not even worth thinking about. And then Linus Pauling showed that without sufficient minerals, your body can't utilize vitamins. And so you see this order. So first we, pay, first we get your digestive capacity back. Then we get your um, good fats up and your fat-soluble vitamins where they should be. Then we can supplement with vitamins and minerals. And only after that do I look at uh, hormone systems. You know, a lot of people, they go to the doctor and they gain 20 pounds, and their hair's falling out, and their energy's down, and they're depressed, and they're achy. And what, is it, what do the doctors do? They look and they sometimes say, well, you know, your adrenals are low, I'm going to give you a steroid. Or your thyroid's low, I'm going to give you some armor thyroid. Or everybody gets an antibiotic and an antidepressant. Seems like it, anyways. No, 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 you can't even look at these things until you spent four or five months just fixing the foundation. And most times, 90% of the time, the hormone systems balance themselves. And only in the rare case where people have done damage to their hormone systems do we actually have to uh, supplement with those. And then, um, this is important, and you can actually start this immediately, um, detoxification. When is the last time any of you detoxified? And this is a trick question. Right now. Your body is detoxifying every second, every minute of every day. Why do you think we go to bed at night, right? Because our body's like, look, I'm going to just try to make it so that you don't eat for a little while. Because when we quit eating, our enzyme systems, our metabolic systems go on cleanup. And so they're finding that at the minimum, we got to get 12 hours of not eating in per day. Like, if you want to eat breakfast at 7, you have to have your last meal done by 7 o'clock at night. You've got to give your body 12 hours of rest. The word breakfast came from the word break fast. And so many people try not to even eat too much for breakfast. Um, people that are really getting dialed in only eat two meals a day, and they eat in between like a six-hour period. Or they take one day off a week where they eat nothing because they're trying to let their metabolic enzymes catch up with the detoxification processes. Other things that we talked about, so raw and fermented foods. I can't say enough about starting to buy some of the fermented foods. I just went downstairs to see what they had, and there's um, lots of local companies that um, have fermented foods. With fermented foods, it increases the enzyme content in them. So can anyone give me examples of the fermented foods that we can eat a little bit with each meal, or at least once a day? Kombucha, right? And this is fermented tea. We can do sauerkraut, the real stuff that's in the refrigerated section. Um, they've shown a couple of tablespoons of sauerkraut with your dinner, raw sauerkraut, um, and your blood will not clump together. Just a little bit of extra enzymes. So that's why sauerkraut. Yeah, the real stuff. Um, kimchi, 
That's the Japanese or Chinese version of sauerkraut, basically. It's more spicy. In Korea, yeah, that's right. Um, kvass, it's just fermented vegetable juice. Uh, you can buy that downstairs. And um, I think I'm forgetting one. Water kefir. Kefir, thank you. Yeah, water kefir, even milk kefir, if you don't have a sensitivity to milk. These are amazing sources of probiotics and enzymes. So if you were to come to me, and I decided you need to be on enzymes, which you do, to get a good enzyme, you're going to spend about 25 bucks for 90 capsules. Um, this, it's not cheap, and you're going to take them forever. And so it's, it's far, far, far cheaper to just start using a lot of these fermented foods. Uh, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck, and you're getting food at the same time. So the lacto-fermentation, rich in enzymes, it also has a good bacteria. It actually increases the vitamin content when you ferment foods, improves digestion, increases flavor, and it's very, very inexpensive compared to supplementation. And so I want, this is what my entire practice is based on. Um, science has found, and this is documented scientific fact, and you all are going to agree because it innately makes sense, all chronic disease is created by stress. Can we agree with that? Everybody say, yeah, I can get that. Physical, emotional, and chemical stress create disease. What they're finding is, just like we have a finite amount of enzymes, our body has a finite amount of ability to handle stress because it requires more metabolic enzyme processes. And what they're finding is this stress, like a bucket, fills up our body and it, we accumulates. And what we found is that you can measure, there's, a, there's a, uh, a formula for measuring people's cumulative chronic allostatic stress in the body. And what it's based on is it's based on symptoms. Symptoms are really important. It's based on dietary history. What foods are you eating? In-office measurements, which is basically your waist-hip ratio that I talked about. Um, and with uh, our in-office measurements, we can actually measure the conductivity of your cells on a cellular breakdown. And so we can see basically how far down the path of metabolic disease you are. Measuring the pH. This is the cheapest, easiest health test that any of us can do. Measure the pH of your saliva. It should be 7.4. Uh, if it's consistently 6 or 5, which a lot of people are, they're literally, they're out of enzymes. They have no minerals to alkalize their body. Their body's in a complete state of acidosis. Uh, and this is what we see in a majority of people. Body temperature is one of the best ways of measuring your, uh, your thyroid function. And then we do blood pressure laying and standing to measure your adrenal function. And then we do blood chemistry lab results that actually matter, like your omega-6-3 ratio, your fat-soluble vitamins, um, your homocysteine and C-reactive protein, the inflammation of the body, your vitamin D levels, these are your B12, these are things that matter. You get those right and you dramatically increase your health. And so we put all of these in to a formula that was developed and we can see over ideal what percent your stress is. Now this is um, what Hans Selye found. There's three phases of stress. <coughs> Any of you have heard this before, the three phases of stress? Okay. So when we're under stress, our body responds to the stress. Like if right now somebody walked in with an Uzi and started waving around, we'd all freak out. And we'd either tackle the guy or we'd run out that door, right? When that stress ends, we come back to normal. That's normal stress. That's phase one stress. And then it returns to normal. Phase two stress is every single day the alarm goes off at 6 in the morning. We fight traffic. We eat crappy food. We breathe in poisons. Our body's constantly responding to stress, and our stress levels and our enzyme production and everything goes up and stays high. This is phase two, and you can stay there for years. Where you're, you're keeping up, you know, but you're keeping up, but you're just pushing as hard as you can. And then Hippocrates described this. Phase three is what he called the tipping point. The tipping point is when you hit um, failure. Your enzyme systems run out, your adrenals become exhausted, your thyroid fails. You develop cancer, you get depressed. This is, this is the crisis. 